Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Welcome. All right, everybody. Hopefully, we are ready to go for sure now. We are going to delve into, we're going to get into the life of our guests. So hopefully everybody can comfortably hear me. Let's let's do this. We are going to spend a lot of time and cram as much as we can in talking to our guest today about relationships and her experience with a narcissist. Hello. Say that one more. Say that one more time. Hello. Oh, there we go. That sounded better. Okay. All right. I, I know you got a beautiful smile, but I just wanted to hear you say something <laughs> to make sure that I can hear everything on this end. You sure you're doing all right? I'm doing good. I'm ready to go. You, I'm excited to you, see you, my friends here. You're not. You're not nervous by any chance, are you? Just, just a little. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So. Fadwa starts it off. She says hi to you. And you see you said you see some friends here. And let's see here. What is it? The, I, I assume that's the tech professional. Uh, for those of you, I say this often and I will continue to say it. If it's your first time here, please make sure you type in a name or your name, whichever you feel emotionally safe to do so that I don't have to read the entire uh, Instagram uh, IG uh, ID. So uh, Empath Warriors, everybody's stopping in veronica 99 and a few more i'm buying you some time so you're not that nervous and uh feel free to just keep speaking and uh say hi to your friends hello my friends <laughs> thank you for your support and encouragement and joining me today um uh, some of you already know my story and some of you this will be a really big surprise uh oh <laughs> <laughs> okay all right, a really big surprise. Now I'm really, now I'm really interested. Uh, I um, am uh, pouring some water in a cup because I, uh, I have a low budget show with high caliber guests, and I'm trying to buy in some time so you're not as nervous. <laughs> because, this, okay, well you know what? Hey, you're getting some love on the screen. Look at that. I, Look at that. I'm, I'm trying to respond here. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, type in if you can't. Oh, there we go. That's what I like. Hey, there we go. We got a community uh, of uh, compassion here. Uh, so everybody's uh, staying connected. Uh, I want to start off uh, talking to you. Please oh, give me a second. I rested yesterday for today. I only had one person on yesterday uh, because I wanted to have just one show because I knew I had you this morning and I wanted to make sure I didn't use my voice too much. Okay. And it's ready to go. It okay. literally is ready to go. Uh, <laughs> what, what, I, I know that's something positive they're saying there on the screen. That's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> or it could be they're warning you about what I'm going to do. So I don't know which one it is. Um, thank oh. you, Jasmine. Jasmine is telling you uh, some love there on the screen yeah, um, to you. Or she's warning you, whichever <laughs> comes first. So I'm going to start the show off with something that... Uh, I chose um, late last night as I was uh, getting my thoughts together for this show. Um, this, is, this is what I normally do when I'm looking for someone to be on the show, to tell their story, to encourage others, which you have volunteered to do. And I truly, in the depth of my heart, I truly appreciate you doing that. And everyone that comes on that wants to do that because it takes a great deal of courage uh, to uh, be on social media and uh, put yourself out there that way. It's one thing to do it and be behind a meme or a post, but you have uh, decided to show everyone the person behind your posting. And uh, that needs to be, uh, well, hold on a second. The children applaud you. Um, but I, I want to read this to you. And then you can uh, tell us a little bit more. So here we go. You have a posting, the very first posting, 
And this is normally what I look at when I'm going to ask somebody to come on the show. I look at their very first post. Uh, the very first posting that you have is trauma creates changes you don't choose. Healing is about creating change that you do choose. That's the posting. But your words uh, are this. This is what you wrote in the comments. And I would choose to heal every time, only through adversity, do you gain wisdom. You also write this. I hope my blog makes a difference. If I reach one person that has been abused, I've done my job. As a sister, a mother, an auntie, cousin, and friend. You literally opened your hand and wrapped your hand around that posting to show that I'm here to be reckoned with. I am not going away. I'm not going to be pushed down and not get back up. And your posting gave me that insight about you, that you are, well, you're a female uh, with force. Uh, you're not a pushover. <laughs> I know. We did a show prep. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> so, like. Uh, she, I want her on my team if we plan something. <laughs> she's going to find a way to win. <laughs> so, it's like She's not going to quit if we're in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Throw it down. Now, so now, you, you see that? You see what's on the screen, right? Uh, yeah, I, I responded. Yes. Yeah, I see you responded to that. So I need to say this for those who won't be able to see it or uh, see this later. On the screen, Veronica99 wrote this. I didn't know, but I went lived through a toxic and abusive relationship for five years. Yeah. That's why I do this podcast. Yeah. This, this visual free TV. But tell us your side of this posting. What <laughs> motivated you to walk this path, to put this out there, your heart, in front of all of these people you do not know? Mm. What was your journey? How did it start? Um. It started at different points. There, are, There's different triggers um, that caused me to start this blog. Um, one of them was just being tired of explaining myself over and over and over about what happened to me in my past and why I am the way I am or why I do the things I do or why I share the stories I share. Um, and and I, was, I got tired of explaining myself to people who were intentionally did not want to understand or did not want to accept my truth of what I was speaking. Mm -hmm. And I right. understand I can make other, fe other people feel comfortable, but I, I just, I, I, I don't want to keep retelling my trauma. Um, sometimes when you retell your trauma too much, it can cause more trauma. And so I just want to get my story out there once and for all. And I want to, this is also an exercise to rid myself of shame. Um, Children who are abused, anybody who's abused, you know, we take the blame. We somehow think we did something wrong and we carry a lot of shame in life. And I just got to the point of, I don't want to carry my shame anymore. It's not my shame, first of all. <laughs> it's not my shame. I didn't do anything. Yeah. It was just born right. into the world. <laughs> right. um, and unfortunately, I was born into a situation where there was, it was a toxic situation and there was abuse. Um, and so, um, that just, it's not my shame, getting rid of it, um, holding people accountable. This is what you did. So I'm telling my story. If you don't like me telling my story, then you should have acted better. <laughs> um, and, and ultimately, as you said in the beginning, it's if I can help one person, if, if my pain and suffering can help one, especially a child, that's, that's why I do it. But ultimately, who I think about when I share my story are my children. So I'm breaking yeah. curses. Um, the buck stops with me. We're not doing this yeah. anymore. The abuse is done. <laughs> my children yeah. are having a different life than I had, um, are having a different life. And that ultimately is why I'm doing this because when you break generational cycles, like my children, you know, its lives are better, but their children's lives will be better and their children's lives will be better. So. It's, uh, it's legacy work, and it's wonderful. It's hard. Right. But well, I, I, I believe just in the brief time that we've got a chance to spend time together, even the, uh, just a couple of times that we saw each other before we even started the show, 
you have in your eyes, there is a sense of it's going to work out because I say so. That's just the way I perceive you as a human being and as a woman. It's almost like it's like you're looking at it going like, okay, I may be nervous, but I got this. It's going to work out because I say so. <laughs> it's just there's an there's an undercurrent of confidence that is not self haughty, but that is wrapped in the bacon of modesty. I call it. I've, I'm two days of talking about bacon. I don't know why. Anyhow, so I just did that yesterday. It just popped in my head. It's like that modesty is it attracts people to you, mm. but there is a I'm an unmovable object because I have so chose to be, and you have chosen to be exemplary for your children. But I I do want to do I I'm going to do this. Let me rephrase that. I'm gonna I'm gonna toss a few things your way that are that's on your page. Okay. And you just have at it, and expound on it, tear it apart, give us some insight of how these little nuggets, these golden nuggets and jewels that you have there, we're gonna unearth some of them so we can learn more how we can can uh, be a little be a little bit more insightful and discerning about who we are based upon some of your posting. For example, you posted this. A child's shoulders were not built to bear the weight of their parents' choices. Mm -hmm. Why is that posting important for us to give attention to? I think it goes back to what I was talking about, shame, mm -hmm. in that things are done to children who are innocent, um, naive, you know, and, but when it's done to children, they take it on as if I've done something wrong and it's my fault. Um, and so that's a very heavy burden to put on a child's shoulders. It's not fair. Yeah. It's not appropriate. It's not okay. Um, that causes trauma. So, you know, as a child, um, I was put into a place of I had to be a little mini adult. And wow. so I, I took on adult responsibilities and mm -hmm. um, adult thinking that there was no place for that for a child to take on that responsibility. So I, as one example, I can give you an example. Uh -huh. um, when I was about 11 years old, you know, maybe about 10 to 12 years old, yeah. My mother would come to me for marital advice. Oh, my goodness. I was giving marital advice to my mother <laughs> at oh. like 10, 11, oh. and 12. So that's what I mean is that's too wow. heavy a burden for a child yeah. to, to help her own parent resolve their marital issues. That's not yeah. appropriate. You know, we're, we're adults, and our friends can come and talk to us, and we they, they could leave and get in the car and go home or whatever the case may be or, or hang up the phone. And we will still be processing what we were talking about. It's a human nature to do so. It doesn't like get erased right after we end the conversation. As adults, we're like that. Yeah. We could be 60, 70 years old and still be that way. Well, imagine an 11 year old child trying, <laughs> discussing marriage. They're still trying to figure out, you know, what kind of colors that they like. Thank and you. so when the, when the conversation comes to an end, the, the adult feels you know, good because they vented and they think they got, you know, they, they talked it out and they just dumped that load of trauma, foolishness, yeah. bad choices, immaturity on that child from the adult. Uh, your, no. your comments, you were going to say something. Go ahead. I say not to mention you're putting a child in a position to choose who's the better parent. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. without a doubt. Yeah. Take a side or to you one of the parent as bad and not a good parent. That's not helpful. Right. How am I able to safe and that somebody's got my back and my parents are looking out for me? Yeah, it's a fine line to walk to to be exemplary to a child if uh, if you're trying to explain to them to understand the other parent. But it's something totally different to be well to to really be a parent that's not thinking about the child's emotional well-being if you're bashing the other parent. Because right. you're really bashing that part of them that is connected with that parent and their self-esteem. That's just, uh, uh, let me get off my soapbox. The show's not about me. What's your, you're supposed to stop me when I do this. You're supposed to stop me. No, you hit okay. home. Oh, you're wait. Oh, well, yeah. Well, 
you know, we all we all have something to say about something, something. So I just have my something, something. But I understand what you're saying. Plus, I'm going to read here uh, what you have, but I got to do this. Do me a huge favor. Explain. Tell everybody your first name. On my on my app or my real. <laughs> you see, see, see. I want to get that out of the way real quick before I start calling you something. And everybody goes like, "That's not her name." I don't want to be the one in the doghouse too quick because I don't mind staying there because the doghouse always gets food. But so, so your what what name should I call you today? I just want to... Christine. Chris. 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 Oops. <laughs> I am so fired. I don't believe I just did that. No worries. No worries. Austin, I'm tossing. I'm turning. I'm like, okay, dude. Okay, Paxton. Don't make a mistake on this name no more. I delayed it and I still messed up. Okay. Well, well, Chris. Well, Chris, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it immensely. Uh, okay. So when I, uh, I just going to toss this in something that you wrote. When I think of my childhood, I realized I was not allowed to be one. My purpose was to carry the emotional pain of my parents. I was not allowed the freedom to explore, grow, and evolve. I was only allowed to be the golden child and remain obedient at all costs. I am grateful for my healing journey because I broke the dysfunctional cycle in my family. And now my children are free to have an authentic childhood experience where his, her soul is honored, mm -hmm. accepted, and loved unconditionally. Then you wrote this in the post. Loving my children is my first experience with unconditional love. You're going to make me cry right now as a daddy. As a daddy. <laughs> you got three kids. You get that. Uh, I read this. Actually, I did tear up when I when I originally read it, <laughs> and you're almost gonna make me cry again, because your thought process when you wrote this is you saying it stops here. Yeah. And not just that, you went to this whole nother level of I'm going to soak this all in and see the experience of what unconditional love feels like coming back to me. And it wasn't just, I'm just going to start showing unconditional love because my children need to know this and that. But you also went that other level of saying, I want to see what it feels like to get unconditional love back from my children. Mm -hmm. What has it been like for you to oh, experience that? Yeah, it's been wonderful. Uh, it's been healing. Um, it's been a it's been a, a wonderful ride to relive my childhood with my children as they're growing oh. up um oh. and getting to do everything with them that i had wanted when i was growing up like you know a real family um real love real support real encouragement uh it, it's it's yeah it's been wonderful um you know and we're, nobody's perfect i'm not up here saying you know no, i'm perfect. Right. not a perfect parent we all make mistakes but um i do it's an amazing feeling to unconditional love when you've never had it and then you experience it as a parent. It, it's just mind blowing. It completely healed my heart, completely wow. healed. And ultimately it's what allowed me to come forward with my story and, and to talk about, um, you know, the abuse that I've endured as a child um, because I've, I've been healed a lot through their love, um, unconditional love and, on the other hand, <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. that part's good, but on the other hand, yeah. you do realize what you missed yeah. because now I see what I'm giving my children and I yeah. now I see what I missed. So it yeah. kind of hits the point that, you yeah. know, it, ooh, I did have a rough childhood. So yeah. that part's a well, little hard to get. I have to tell you, listening to you say that reminds me of something a previous guest said to me uh, in their experience similar to what you're describing their childhood experience was rough as well and they said you know not everybody not everybody deserves a driver license driver's license even though they get it and not everybody deserves to have a child even though they bear one <laughs> and i went like you need to make a shirt out of that <laughs> that, was like, no, that was pretty good yeah. that was like that was pretty good because she made a very valid point 
and so too with your experience, right? You, you're the type of person that, well, you deserve to have children because you know what to do with them. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Not everybody deserves to have a pet. You know how you, some kids, they go like, oh, I want this pet. I want You go like, okay, you got to feed it. Right. You got to, you know, sometimes you got to do this and then you got to clean up after it because it's not going to, you know, and then some people have children. They go like, oh, I got a child. I got all this attention. And okay, I got to stop it. That was my soapbox again. I got to get back over here. Get back over here. I'm going to, go ahead. You were going to say, no, nope, go ahead. No, I just, I'm agreeing with you. All of the above. Absolutely. Um, I, yeah, I can't disagree with anything you said, but it's a tremendous responsibility to be yeah. a parent. Um, and I, you know, I guess some folks don't realize that. No, it, a privilege and an honor as well. It's a privilege and an honor because you have a lifetime of experiencing their highs and their lows. And each one of those can draw you closer to that child if they're receiving unconditional love and we stay approachable as parents. Uh, Veronica has something to say about uh, what we've been talking about a little bit earlier. She says, I believe that too concerning children, our kids are not to blame for adult decisions. And uh, uh, Gladys is here, says, hey, they're all the way from, I'm quite sure there's more to that, but she means South Africa, I'm quite sure. So oh. I'm quite sure, that's, I'm quite sure that, that's what she meant. Yep, that's all she wrote. Uh-oh, she lost the keyboard probably in the process. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, uh, Brene Brown, you have a posting from her, and it says, one day you will tell your story of how you overcame what you went through and it will be someone else's survival guide. Mm. Now, you wrote this, you started a blog. You have these postings on Instagram. What has the reception been? What connection have you experienced with others as you began to, well, unload your story and uh, make room for unconditional love? Mm. And, and that's what I've received. Um, you know, I originally started the blog for the reasons that I cited, mm. but you know, I was, I needed a community. I felt okay. really alone. Every time I would try to talk to people and explain what's going on, they either they didn't understand, they didn't want to understand, or they just didn't want to hear it. Um, and I needed to be with like-minded people who, who really, because from experience, know what I'm talking about. So when I, when I share my stories, um, they fill me at the heart level at the soul level. Um, and so and it's been wonderful that, you know, they, I interact with people, I talk to people, you know, we message each other from all around the world, which is even more amazing that we're all connected, or, and, which was a great thing for me to see that I'm not alone, that this is a global issue, um, a global issue, especially um, narcissistic personality um, abuse, you know. Um, and so it was really comforting and it, it strengthened me and empowered me and encouraged me to keep going with my story and to not be afraid um, because there is fear attached to sharing your story is, you know, because you're afraid that people are going to look at you and judge you and, um, and that you will, you will feel some of that shame that you've been trying to get rid of. So I just keep moving forward, hoping one day I'm going to share my story and there won't be any shame attached and I won't be embarrassed and I won't be worried about what people are thinking or saying. Um, so I just keep going forward. But this community, oh my goodness, it's yeah. been such a thing. It really, really just lifted me up, lifted me up. I, I needed to, to make sure I had you on after I looked at your page simply because I'm getting what I wanted. I wanted you to be able to come on and say that because there are so many like you. Yeah. But they haven't crossed, as it were, that next step or that line for them where they want to to be doing exactly what you're doing right now. They write me and tell me. And they go like, I'm, I'm getting there. You know, like so-and-so that you had on and so-and-so you had on. And I often remind them, this is, this is your journey. They are taking theirs. But their journey, it may seem like they're ahead of you, but actually you're all going together. It's just that, you know, she just happens to be one of the 12 apostles who speaks more than the rest of them. So it's just, <laughs> no, I tell people, I've often told people that. I was going like, that, she's the Peter in the group. So it's just like, you know, and everybody else. But they were all still the same. No, I'm just saying. No, I get it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't make this a religious show, but it's a fact. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's like somebody in the group happens to be the one that says, hey, I'll tell the story. <laughs> it's like, but everybody's still the same group. 
everybody's in the same group. So, so it, just because you may not be standing up in front of a camera now, right. you have put pen to paper maybe, or you may have seen it in the store and took the lady aside and said, is everything okay? So everybody has, plays a part. I agree. Yeah. Without a doubt, I now have to get to this because I wanted to wait till I get to these, and here we go. Uh, when it comes to narcissism, mm. <laughs> you just did it. Your, your tone when you said it, it's like I'm in trouble. Just when you said that, I was like, man, I'm going to be in trouble. Anyway, when it comes to narcissism, we talked about uh, your healing journey, why you got started. But I do want to delve into this. Narcissists play a different part in each person's life that they come across. And everyone, especially since I've been doing this, which has been about a year, my daughters and I started this, uh, leaving this uh, platform open for people to talk about narcissism and other things. Everyone has a different experience, but they're all the same. Yes. Their behavior is the same, but our experience may be different in the sense that the degree or the intensity may be different. The depth and the breadth of how long we're with uh, or the, having to deal with someone like that. So everyone's different. Everyone's angle of the rainbow is different. I'm not calling narcissists a rainbow. <laughs> a, self a self absorbed person, I'm not saying that. Please not. Rainbows are beautiful. <laughs> what I'm saying is their, their behavior can affect us differently. I'm going to read a posting and then tell me your experience. You have a posting that says, To my narcissist, you looked at me as a tool and used me as just that. You didn't care for me. All you wanted from me was the adoration and attention that you craved. I just want you to know that you did not break me. My spirit may have been hurt, but since leaving you behind, it has once again bloomed and flourished. Has that been your experience? Yeah, because I think it's common knowledge that you can't heal in a toxic environment. If you want healing, you have to leave whatever's, you know, causing you trauma or harm. You, you have to exit the situation and get new perspective in order mm -hmm. to heal. Uh, right. You need space and some time. And that's really important. Because uh, the, the latter part, the very last thing that's a part of that posting says this. In spite of all your attempts to degrade and destroy me, you fail. Yeah. I stand here today in defiance of you and everything you did to me. Mm. Why is that important for others to hear that and know that, especially if they've are, they, haven't, they haven't got to where you are. They're just beginning their journey. Why mm. is it important for them to hear these words? But it's not your fault. Um, the, the insidious, insidious, I can't speak Insid today. Insidious, insidious. Hey. we're a team. Hey, I told you we're a team. I got your back, girl. I got your back. We're a team. <laughs> I Go mean, ahead. We're <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, oh, hey, yes. wait, hold on a second. Let me drink some coffee for you because we're a team. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I, it's just, <sighs> narcissism, it's rough. It's a rough um, abuse to endure because they completely devalue you as a per you're no longer a person mm -hmm. you're what's called narcissistic supply your only existence and worth is based on what they can use you for and even as a child that is true so for me um i had to i was told who i am i didn't oh, get okay. <laughs> you talking about as a child as a child which is which okay. is important to me that my children that was my point is I want them to have the experience of discovering themselves and growing up with love and encouragement and guidance but they need to find their own figure things out I didn't have that opportunity I was told who I was how I should act what I should say how I should dress um you know, I was the golden child. So for those of you who don't know what that means, it basically I I was the child that was pushed out in the front and said and said, look at her. Yeah, right. because look at her. Then all of us are yeah. we're just yeah. Happy, yeah. normal family. Nothing going on. Nothing yeah. to see. Nothing, nothing to see here. <laughs> nothing to see here. See, that child is doing great. See, nothing to right. see here. And right. not just great, like 
sparkling great, like the gold <laughs> yeah. pile great, like right. front and center with a bunch of awards and accolades. So how could we be bad parents if look at this child, how amazing yeah, right. she, there's no yeah. way we can be bad parents. But and and so I lost that opportunity to figure out who I am. And so I've had to spend my entire adulthood figuring out who am I? What do I believe? Um, what do I like? Uh, right. Just, I mean, right. you would think that at an older age, like you would already know who you are and you've had experiences mm -hmm. in life, but I didn't have that. And so I had to create it for me. Yeah, um we started talking about this, what we're talking about right now. And you said that you were told who you were. And I thought for sure you're going to gravitate to a romantic relationship. But then you went to talking about a child. So now I have to ask, did that kind of carry over into your romantic relationships that people were just gotten, they just thought they had the, well, the right <laughs> to, to just tell you who you were and how this is going to go. And you couldn't experience life on its own. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't have my I didn't have my voice yet. And I didn't okay. know. Yeah. I thought my worth was dependent on if somebody likes me. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so that definitely carried over in my romantic relationships. I think um, I was always looking for a parent's love in a relationship, especially my father's. Um, so that's what I was always searching for. Um, right, right. And so yeah, I Whoa, that's another interview. <laughs> well, I can tell some stories. That, wait, hold on, no, hold on, wait, I got, I got, I got one for that. We a team. Watch this. You said that, and they go like, "That is a sneak peek. Is what's coming to you right. soon." <laughs> we'll have that was just really weird. Everybody's gonna go like, "The guy." Oh, all right, so all right, I got to do this. We're gonna talk about that at some point, just not okay. today. But okay. I do have this. If you were being told who you were at a young age. If you had to put a timeline to that, how many years or decades, per se, did it take before the veil was pulled back and you began to experience life the way you're experiencing it now? How long did it take that you were wrapped up in that image as the golden child? Probably I came out of this my journey to healing probably started around late 20s, early 30s, and especially when I became pregnant with my first child, wow. um, because that caused me to self-reflect and think about, I asked yeah. myself, yeah. what I pass on to her? And, you know, am, am I going to pass all this toxic and this, all this junk to her? Or am I going to pass something different? If I'm going to pass something different to her and I want her to have a better experience than I did, then I got to fix me. And I got to do my shadow work and take a look at um, the parts of me that were toxic. Because when you're raised in a toxic environment, mm. you are toxic. Yeah, well, and, yeah. and anybody who knew me in my 20s, saw that firsthand and thank God there was no Instagram around back then <laughs> or social media. <laughs> There's no evidence, but, but if you that, to... that will be show number three. <laughs> yeah. I really what? 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 Um, actually my wow. senior year in college, I had a somewhat of a breakdown. I almost didn't graduate. Um, but from that point forward, I did the work, the therapy and the shadow work and, um, healing, um, to get me to the place where I am now where I can talk about it and I'm okay. Like I'm not yeah. breaking talking before right, right. I, I couldn't talk without crying. I would right. just have it down and now I can talk about it and it's okay. And I talk about it with the purpose of, I hope my story helps somebody else. Yeah. That is the right. whole reason for doing any of this. You, you, um, you, you find yourself with eyes open looking at other people's let me let me rephrase that do you find yourself looking at other people when you're out in public or even if you're watching tv and you're going like they need to do shadow work <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> i was waiting to i was going to ask you that in the show prep and i was like no i'm saving that one i'm saving that one because i want to see your experience in real time and you sure way. enough you wanted to go like i'm not judging anyone but that girl needs some help right there. That girl needs, <laughs> she looked like me in, a tw in my 20s. I know she needs to stop it right now. <laughs> I would 
that way. I would say Mama Bear, way. Mama Bear. <laughs> I recognize some behaviors that are too late. You try to clean it up. You try to clean it up. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> don't try, see, don't try to do that right now. I know how you really talk. We did a show prep. I know how you can talk. <laughs> so you, look at you trying to get all politically correct. I would <laughs> never do such a thing. I, I, I am I am not like that. But Paxton, when we're off the air, I'm gonna tell you. I got a list of people I see on TV need some help. <laughs> I got shadow work, baby. <laughs> you be sending them T-shirts. <laughs> Hashtag shadow work. <laughs> they go anonymous. <laughs> get, you need it. You need to take take a break from TV for a while because you're okay. messing up in public. <laughs> Here's the scary part, though, is that you know narcissism <laughs> is growing. It's getting worse, <laughs> not better, yeah. and, and increasingly more victims. It's becoming global. Younger um, too, and younger, you know, younger victim. Right. I, I'm at least I'm experiencing that based upon what you're saying, which is absolutely true. I'm people. <laughs> telling me about their 14, 15 year old daughter with a guy, you know, guy 17, 16, he's a narcissist. And, and they describe, you know, talking to them, you go like, they're starting young being crazy. <laughs> and not even waiting to their twenties or, you know, 21, they're like three or four different people that they're messing with and ghosting and just doing what adults are doing. Yeah. It's like, it's crazy. we got to turn to the screen here. Um, Mm, Pacone, M. Pacone, if I say that right, uh, says, I never knew what you had gone through, of course, being your student in your student years, I, uh, years ago. Oh, someone who was your student years ago. Uh, if everybody's wondering, it's because you were, are, are a teacher. Am I saying that? Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, I didn't want to get in trouble. I'm going like, uh, she's an um, engineer. <laughs> I'm going to start making Okay. Say that again. No, say it again, please. I said I love my students. I'm proud to be a teacher. So they never knew what you were going through as your student uh, when they were your student years ago is what they're saying. After starting your page, I was like, wow, she had gone through narcissistic relationships as well, just as I had. Okay, that's uh, I got to I got to let that sink in for a minute. People saw you one way. Because, you know, that happens, right? You know, you've talked to other victims. People see one thing. Oh, the neighbors, they look so, you know what I mean? Everything looks so. And the reality, the reality, <laughs> oh, uh, I hate to say this. You're not the first person that came on any of my shows that haven't said the same thing. I've heard that right. in show prep and on in real shows and shows, <laughs> live shows. They go like, oh, yeah, all right. I could fake, I could fake it. Yeah, I can make sure you you never know anything's happening behind closed doors. Yep. And the reality of it is, someone's self esteem is just being nuclear bombed and just ripped apart. The the very emotional flesh that they have is being ripped off of their bone. Uh, mm -hmm. That they they literally feel like they don't exist and everything's bare and they're just raw emotionally. They're just raw and ripped apart by a narcissist. Uh, Chavez O three says a hundred percent agree. As I look down at my baby girl, I realize what I want different for her. Um, Chavez says, she says, we love you, Miss Mrs. Flores. <laughs> okay, you people just wrong, because I'll cry. <laughs> I ain't got, it's my show, I do what I want. I got, a, I got crying rags right over here, so don't mess with me. I'll do it. You already got to hear mine. See, that's just wrong. You people ain't right. Do it again, though. Do it again. Do it again. Okay, the the <laughs> the the posting. I I have to ask you about this. Here we go. Another Brene Brown post uh, you made here. This one is dated. Uh, well, this is five days ago. It says shame is the most powerful master emotion. It's the fear that we're not good enough. It's the fear that we're not good enough. Shame is the most powerful master emotion again this is from Brene Brown when when you posted that five days ago you added this comment there is no shame in my game and then you put a heart behind it what was it like when shame was in your game it was a fake existence it was a facade it was like living the life as a narcissist because that's 
that's what it, the disorder is about, right? The personality disorder is that they're, they have a false self. And so yeah. I learned how to do that, how to present a false self that wasn't me, but um, it interacted well with others and it, it showed up well and it looked good and, wow. and stuff like that. But, but when you're not authentic and you're not true to yourself, that there's shame in that. You're lying. It's not the yeah. truth. This isn't really who I am. This is who I'm projecting because I was taught to do this so that I could appear normal. And honestly, some of why I started this blog too is because I was tired of feeling, um, of faking normalcy. I was tired of faking that, yeah, my family's great too. And I visit them and we go do things together and they love right, me. Right we're a great, you know, happy family. And, and, and I have stories to share too. And I, I just wanted to be normal. So I would present that I was normal. But in actuality, it was all a lie. It was all a lie. And I just got tired of lying, lying to myself. Um, it's not a good way to live. It's not a happy way to live. Um, for me, I found that being authentic and just being an open book, that has really saved my spirit. Um, it has brought me back to myself because when I can speak my truth, I can be authentic. And when you are authentic um, and you are vulnerable um, yeah. and you strengthen vulnerability, that then helps others to do the same and inspires them to do, at least from my experience, that's what I found. Yeah. Right. So there, are so, there are so many juicy points in what you just said. I look forward to making a clip of what you just said and posted it one day. Actually, my daughter, my, my executive producer daughter will do that. Uh, but I'm going to tell you this. I'm not going to forget what you just said. Oh, because you. there are so many books, volumes of books, which are essentially human lives. Everybody is their own book with multiple chapters, many chapters. And, and we can literally not be that open book because we haven't dealt with things or projected shame onto us. In turn, we mirrored it, and now we are being shamed and carrying that shame that technically never really generated and started with us because none of us are perfect. And now we're taking that person's imperfection, and we're carrying it around in our backpack along with ours, and we're going like, I don't know why, I just don't feel better. And you make the valid point. We want to be an open book. We would love to have everyone around us be open book but we have to deal with our chapters and start excavating the shame and so that we can be an open book which means we'll attract people who are open book right right in, in, instead of more shameful people and then we have a, a whole household household let alone a whole street full of shameful people walk around acting like everything's okay and and it's not and we're carrying around guilt and shame i love your mindset i love your thoughts I've been saving this one for now. And here we go. I want your professional human experience because, you know, we're not talking as a teacher, but tell us like a teacher. Tell us, teacher. Uh, I want you to, to talk about what I'm about to read right now. But you can cross over from being a teacher to a preacher when I, when I mention this to you. You just knock yourself out. I want to spend some time on this one-word subject, but I'm going to read the post. The word is boundaries. I want your experience, your thoughts, every angle you can present when it comes to boundaries. Now, we just talked about shame. We talked about uh, childhood experiences, a number of things. But this one, I really, I wanted you on the show to talk about boundaries. Here we go. Boundaries. Today, I set healthy boundaries that support and protect my emotional well-being, time, and energy. As I show love and respect to myself, others will recognize that in me, recognize that in me, and uh, it will also give them permission to do the same. Again, as I show love and respect to myself, others will recognize that in me, and it will also give them permission to do the same. Boundaries, in the, in the comments you write, boundaries are the key to recovery and mental health. Boundaries are the key to mental health and recovery. Someone is beginning their journey of recovery and healthy living. Someone is doing that. Okay. I need you to walk them 
through that path of why boundaries are important, even if they're challenging to do. Yeah. You know, when you're first starting to set, I remember this, when I was first starting to set boundaries, um, it oh, was incredibly difficult, incredibly difficult. But like anything else, the more you practice, the better you get. Um, and for me, I would just start with small boundaries um, that were practical and attainable and that I could consistently keep keep going forward with. And then right. as I with just little simple boundaries, um, then I started to increase those in seriousness. Um, like, for example, I started off with just maybe saying, um, when my mom calls, um, I won't respond to her negativity. I will just, okay, that's your opinion. Okay, and just not fight. Um, but as you try your boundaries out, what you will find, at least in my experience, is that people will attack those boundaries because they're new and um, boundaries are meant to protect you. And so folks who take advantage of you don't like boundaries and they will try boundaries at every corner. So it's really important to be consistent um, and don't give up on your, don't break your boundaries. You, you teach people how to treat you. you. You're teaching them with boundaries how to treat you um, res with respect, to honor your soul and your spirit. Um, and so for me, my boundaries have gone from starting with little boundaries to mm -hmm. I tried every single boundary I could possibly think of to maintain a relationship with my, my parents. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when you have a narcissistic personality disorder, it doesn't go away with age it actually can get worse. Um, and so at this point, my boundary is no contact. That's my boundary today. I, I just can't have contact because, and, and you don't get there easy. Like that was definitely a last resort. I tried every possible avenue I could, I read about, I could think about, I was advised to try to make a relationship with my parents work as an adult. Unfortunately, they don't see me as an adult. I'm still the little girl that they wish would come back into their lives. Um, so, you know, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> I have boundaries now and um, I love I, my- I think, I think that's your new hashtag. <laughs> hashtag, th that's not gonna happen. Yeah, <laughs> you, should, you should get a shirt. You should totally get a shirt. Is it? And, and when you put it on and walk around the house, everybody got like, "Oh, he's in that mood today. Don't mess with her." That's right. not gonna happen. <laughs> you should wear that when you when you're teaching a class. You just yes. put it on and you're like, "Oh, oh or on the day that you got to give a test." <laughs> okay, that excuse that's not gonna happen today. Right. <laughs> now get in there and take your test. Um, <laughs> when it comes to people trying to treat you, excuse me, let me rephrase that. When it comes to your parents still mm -hmm. seeing you as that child. And you recognize, well, that's not going to happen. It works. It works for you. Have you have you tried that same mindset in dealing with other people that you had to put boundaries with that it's not going to happen because they still see you one way and they want to challenge your boundaries? All the time, every uh, day. In and I every... wanted you to say, I so wanted you to say that because I was going to say it. And I said, no, I got to find a way to ask a question where you say it. It doesn't go away, does it? No. And, and you know, it doesn't matter if I'm at work. It doesn't matter if I'm at home. It doesn't matter if yeah. I'm in my social circles. It, yeah. yeah. You have to have boundaries at all times. And you're the one who's responsible to implement those boundaries and to hold those boundaries. Um, and so it can be tough. It's, you know, it's. It's a burden on your shoulders, but you're worth it. That's the yeah. point is there you, you, go. There you are go. worth it. You're worth it. And so if you have to stand up for yourself. You have to advocate for yourself. It really sucks that I didn't have parents who taught me how to do that. It really sucks that they didn't do that for me. But you know what? I can't spend the rest of my life blaming them. They did what they did. It, it is what it is, but I can change it. Um, and I have changed it. And that, again, that's through taking a healing journey that's taken decades that I'm still on that will never end. And I, I do write about this or blog about this, that yeah. mm -hmm. I will always be in recovery from abuse, 
always to the day I die, um, I will be in recovery. Recovery is, you know, therapy. Um, it's like a peeling an onion, as it said, um, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you get through one layer and then oh my god there's more and yeah, then you get yeah. that and, oh my god there's more like how can there be more but there's more there's always more uh, so forever you know be working on myself and not just for myself but to be a better human in the world <laughs> we need better kinder more <laughs> in our world yeah yeah well you know uh you make the planet a better place your region of the earth is better because you're there um <laughs> You're, you're, uh, well, you're in California, so that's good. We need, we got nice, nice California people, uh, because you're, you're, you're doing your part. Uh, I'm down here, you're up there, so it's right. kind of, we, 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 we do our part, but I've saved now this part for this part of the show. We have gone 51 minutes, 51, 51, 51, 52 and counting, almost 52 minutes of talking. Just so I could get to this part that you had no idea I was going to do. <laughs> really bad old man impersonation. Oh wait, I am an old man. Okay, you are a you are a blogger. You are a teacher. I hope you're ready for this because I want you to think about the things that you've blogged and use your teaching ability because I'm going to say a few things to you and you just as quickly as you can pass out some encouraging information for people to think about. Here we go. I'm going to say this to you, and you just say whatever comes to your mind as simply and succinct as possible. Generational trauma. Can be broken. Awesome. Next one. Survivor of child abuse. Um, it is possible to not only survive child abuse, but to thrive, but to thrive. It's more than thriving. Okay. Surviving parents who have narcissistic traits, behavior, or NPD. Will take a lifetime to heal from and don't give up. I like that. Don't give up. No contact. Is a last resort, but 100% effective. The last one that I set aside is this. The word is H-O-P-E. H-O-P-E. What do those four letters mean to you my friend everything everything uh without I, I just you just reading that word i'm like getting emotional for me hope is saved my life the the to have the capacity to imagine a better world and a better life for yourself that takes courage that takes serious courage to be in the in hell basically you're in hell but even in the midst of hell, you can still imagine that it's, it, it's got to be better than this. This can't be it. It's got to be better. Um, so for me, yeah, hope saved my life. Where would I be without? Where would any of us be without hope? Yeah, it's everything. You have made it quite clear that there is life after narcissistic abuse. And the life that you have is much better when you have hope. When you do the work, the shadow work, you do the excavating. Yes. But you're still going to keep finding things under a rock here and there. You're going to find little crevices where there, you'll find this or that. But overall, you have found a way to be a mom that has an impact in her children's life and exemplary to your students and others. They got to know you from your page. I got to know you from a show prep and spending time with you today. And uh, you're going to be back because oh. I said, because I said so, <laughs> because we have so much more to unpack. That's going to help others. I know this show is going to have an impact. All of the shows do, but what you did today was priceless. 
because you not only shared part of yourself, but you you instilled in others that uh, well, that's not going to happen here. Attitude. So, so so I love it. I I love it immensely. You have been very encouraging to me. Uh, I know my daughters when they when they watch this back will be encouraged by it too. They're my producers. They haven't fired me yet, so I know I I, I at least survived the show today. This was a good show. I appreciate you joining me to do a show, and I appreciate you taking over and doing what you did today. Um, we're going to have to call it quits now. Uh, everyone else, I'm going to look over here to all of the names that I see here, Chavez, uh, uh, um, Myra, uh, uh, Daughters of the Anonymous, and others that have uh, come uh, through the live to support you or to take a peek. I truly appreciate it. Uh, Jasmine um, <laughs> says, an inspiration, and who I look up to. She says that to you. Uh, Veronica, <laughs> as you can see on the screen, says, Chris, uh, you're a true warrior and inspiration. Thank you. And my goodness, girlfriend, the tech professor says, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> She's amazing. Wait, hold on a second. I got something for her, amazing. I got something for her, amazing. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> Myra says the best. Listen, this is free TV, but it means nothing if the audience is not here to give this kind of support. Yeah. Love the messages behind the messages, uh, the tech professor says. Uh, the audience makes the show, but it's the, con it's the guest that brings the content. And when the two get married like they are right now, uh, my toes twinkle. So I, I start getting like Fred Flintstone gonna, when I go bowling. I got my toes. I get on my toes. Okay, so my, my toes are twinkling. Your yeah. heart. <laughs> Listen, um, I appreciate you so uh, for you. doing this. I know you were extremely nervous. <laughs> yeah. you, I'm sorry. I just, but nobody can tell that if they, listen, hey, everybody, it, before we go, could you tell us that she was nervous? Because seriously, she was really nervous. <laughs> she was really, really nervous. And so I try to do my best to make my guests feel comfortable. But once you start talking, it changes everything. Yeah. And and the more you, because all you're doing is talking about yourself, you just have no idea what I'm going to point out. Right. <laughs> but I'm telling you, you did an excellent job. So next time we get together, which I hope you'll do two more shows with me because I have some other information I'll, that you have that I didn't bring out. Uh, two more shows, you're going to be super professional. You should just go on a circuit and you should just professionally just, just make it happen. It says, uh, I knew you would be great. See, Jasmine says that. Empath Warriors gives you three purple hearts. Uh, you got three purple hearts. You can get one. You got three, man. Yeah, so listen, thank you so much for doing this. Everybody, love each and every one of you, but it's time for me to go. Um, we have another show coming up in a few more hours at uh, 1.30, I believe it is, or we'll see whether that's going to take place or not. But one thing is for sure, you were awesome as the diva for the day this morning. <laughs> all right? So take care of the Bay Area. I'll be taking care of my part down here, and uh, we will talk to you soon. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Bye, Chris.